so in Rice, there are two central characters. There's a, a younger female character whose name is Nisha, and she's the executive officer of a fictional agricultural company called Goldenfields. So she's EO, that's the second in charge. Um, and then there is a second character, who's kind of like joint protagonist, Yvette, who's um, in her early 60s and she's Chinese and Nisha's Indian. Um, and Yvette's a, a cleaner in the building where Nisha works. Um, and they, they form a friendship and they kind of like physically go off on little separate journeys um, where they kind of assist each other. Mm -hmm. The themes are to do with business and capitalism and also how women and women of colour survive and thrive and succeed in, in that world. Um, and I guess in some, maybe this is like a clunky metaphor of like glass ceilings because there's metaphors of like different levels of the building and where the, the women are pegged and, and not really being at, physically not being at the, the very top floor of that building. Mm. Um, and it's also about rice, like the eating of rice and the symbol of rice in, um, I, guess, I mean, it kind of goes into, I guess, you assume rice and Asian cultures, like Indian mm. culture. Mm, mm. Well, it just, we know it's a staple in Asian and South Asian cultures. And he's talking me on Twitter. My strategy is to play nice with Daddy Egan and Junior. The characters and play all the other characters. I was going to say there's, there's quite a bit of multiple roles. Yeah, yeah. Quite a bit. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes so there's a few kind of accent changes. There's yeah. quite a few accents. Yeah. Which, which is amazing to rehearse yeah. in a reading. Where you're like, okay. <laughs> well, sometimes it feels like, let's make them Scottish, just so it's easier to, yeah, <laughs> for the audience differentiate. to... Differentiate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different hat. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. I wrote it and researched it through some Australia Council funding. Mm. Um, and at that stage, there, there wasn't any development attached. It was it was a literature grant, um, and then that was last year. And then, then I had a, a draft ready, and I thought it was like more ready <laughs> than it was. <laughs> it wasn't. Um, and I just put my hand up for extra workshopping opportunities. And how long have you been involved in its development? Um, I think Michelle sent rice to me at the end of last year. Yes, November yeah, just to yeah, read yeah. yeah and I really loved it and um, some early conversations with Malthouse about it and then yes then Street Theatre in May mm-hmm and now PWA <laughs> <laughs> so you've, yeah. you you, so you two have done that the, the, the sort of development journey yes together. Yeah, yeah very jointly uh, but but we've worked together before as well so um we had an existing relationship and what how would you characterize your working relationship, like it, it, how, what happens between you when you work together? Um, I think it's quite, you know, you're very generous and as you said, you work with a lot of em empathy. Yeah, it's great to actually be doing a play together. Yeah. yeah. It's like really exciting. Yeah. yeah. So what do you, how do you feel in the room uh, oh. when, when, when your stuff's being workshopped, developed? I, I love it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll get to a point where I won't, I won't want more feedback. I think it's probably something I, I'm still learning about um, how responsive to be because I'm probably very, very yeah. responsive yeah. and I'm at the moment I think I'm a writer that is, is good, served better when there is strong dramaturges and directors that I can work with um, just because experience shows me that with, with that collaboration my, my work is stronger and more interesting. Um, so I, I love it. So I'm not really a writer that gets to... Um, Maybe it's because I'm, well, I reach a point where I feel certain about a work and then mm. people pose really um, meaningful questions and so then I become uncertain but I don't feel like I become unstabilised because we've done like a mm. lot of work in the last week and work I, I probably didn't even really imagine. Not because I thought the work was like perfect but just because I think I just ran out of capacity to think it through any further. Mm. And also, and this week you've been like really good at just being like, okay, that's enough for today, or that's all I need. Yeah, that's mm. true, yeah. Like, that's, that's a good quality in these yeah. circumstances, isn't it? Because yeah. it, it can happen, I, I think, in these environments where people sort of do that, stay up all night, rewrite, pull everything apart, rewrite everything, and sometimes it has amazing results, but you can also lose the piece completely. Yeah, and it's been great yeah. having Tanya and Jane there as well, and the performers to say, um, maybe too far, too much is gone, or like this direction was useful to go in, but maybe rein it back a bit. And is the is the play very 
where does it sit in you? Is it very personal to you, or I mean, um, all, all, all one's work is personal, of course. But where does it sit? I think so. It sits in a like I, I don't feel like there's a particular character that I, I identify with. Although, of course, I went with all writing. Yeah. There's a part of you buried in there, sometimes quite obviously. Um, but I think there's a, a, you know, a theme going on about mothers and daughters um, w within biological families and also in just the families we kind of make at work and play. Um, and that resonates with me because I am from a big family, but I, I have different relationships with my, my sisters and with my mother that's maybe it's quite representative in this play, like they're not, they're not completely tender, <laughs> not straightforward tender. Um, so it's been interesting to reflect on my own family relationships um, and relationships with other women as well because mm. the play only has female actors playing all parts but some of the significant relationships are between women and sometimes they're really um, competitive relationships and other times they're relationships where they're kind of both in survival mode mm. helping each other. Um, do you... What, do you know what the arc of the of the play will be after here? Like, is there a production planned or? I don't know. Like, in some ways, it is such a big play, but perhaps because there's only two actors, I'm kind of happy to put the producer hat back on mm. to wrangle support and money to do it independently if I have to. Yeah. Um, She's very good at that. <laughs> I don't mind doing that kind it's of like stuff. Me. <laughs> That's a very, very valuable skill. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is a val yeah, it is a useful skill. I like spreadsheets. <laughs> um, but I'm keen to. I feel like it's it's kind of got. I would be really proud to put this work on. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll say that now. <laughs> we'll see how it's received in the yeah. festival. I might, I might have a different response <laughs> because I'm so sensitive to what everybody thinks. So it might be like you know, a few days down the track. I'm like, oh, okay, we'll just go back to Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Well, um, look forward to seeing the reading on, on Wednesday. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.